Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Fingler. I work on our technical marketing team. And in this Tech Tip video, I'm gonna show you how you can display data from SQL databases when selecting a feature on the map using our data linking technology. Let's take a look. Okay, so in this Tech Tip video, I'm gonna show you how you can display data from SQL databases inside of your Geocortex viewers when selecting features on the map. And this is done through the data linking technology that ships with Geocortex Essentials. So here you can see I'm in Geocortex Essentials Manager and currently I'm on the map tab and I've just got a single layer that I've added. Uh, well, I've got two layers. One's my OpenStreetMap base map and my Fire Hydrants layer. And this Fire Hydrants layer has a variety of attributes on it. One particular one being the facility ID. This is essentially the fire hydrant ID. And I happen to have an SQL database table which highlights the inspections performed on these fire hydrants. It's a non-spatial uh, data table living in SQL server. And I happen to want to join that to my fire hydrants. Now the key thing here is you know, you have to have a common ID between the spatial feature that you want to um, select and the non-spatial ta table that you want to join to. So um, here I'm going to show you how you can accomplish this. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is navigate to the data connections tab. And this is where we're going to add a data connection to our non-spatial database. So here you can see I can give it a display name. I'm just call it, I'm gonna call it the name of my server that I'm connecting to. And uh, we've got a variety of different data providers um, available. So you can see we've got ODBC providers, but in this example, because I'm connecting to an SQL server database, I'm gonna select SQL client. And if you're interested to learn more about all the different data connections, all of this, um, lives on our documentation center. So you can just navigate to here. There's a data connections tab as well as a data links tab. And that'll have additional information where you can kind of learn how to, um, yeah, connect to other database providers. So in this example, I'm gonna select an SQL client and I'll click next and I'm gonna enter in my server name. And in this particular scenario, I'm gonna use SQL server authentication and I'm gonna enter in my password and test it. So here you can see it's successful and I can now click next. And sure, I'll save my, save my uh, username credentials. So here you can see these are all of the, I guess, instances inside of this um, SQL Server database and I'm after my production instance. So I'll click okay and click finish. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna save my site. So the next step in the, uh, the workflow here is to navigate to the mapping tab. And we're going to configure a data link on the layer that we want to um, tie this to. So here I've got my fire hydrants layer. If I edit the layer here, you'll see there's a variety of other configuration options and I'm after the data links tab. So I'm gonna add a data link, give it a name. So I'll call this inspections. And here you can see I'm selecting my uh, data connection that I just created. I'll click next. And now this is where I can select the actual data or the table in my particular production instance that I want to join this to. So I'm gonna scroll down. There's all sorts of stuff in here, but I'm after this hydrant inspections table. And these are the attributes within my hydrant inspections table. I might want to select all of them, um, but you can also pick and choose which ones you want to show. And I'll click next. So this is where we actually perform the join. So I'm going to do a one to many join. So I'm, I've got one hydrant asset, which has many inspections. So I'm going to add a condition. This is this table column is the, uh, the attributes of my actual, um, of my uh, table and I'm going to join it to my uh, facility ID on my hydrant asset. So this is my feature field. Um, I could give it a default value. Um, let's, uh, let's quickly find a, a default value to use because I might want to use the same, same step uh, or same value in another step. So let's go to here here, find my fire hydrants. Let's 
scroll down. I'm just gonna do where one equals one. Uh, get the facility ID and just return, I don't know, the first five features. And once that's done running, I'm gonna use this facility ID. And if we go back here, I'll just enter that in as my default value. We don't need a default value, but that's what I'm going to enter there. And I'll just call this facility ID. And I'll click OK. And I'll click Finish. So you can see now I've configured my data link. We can actually quickly test this by opening up the site's REST endpoint here and scrolling down and selecting data links now. Here's my inspections data link that I just configured and I can click link. This is where I can test it. So here you can see I've got a default value that I just entered in. If I click link, we can see that this facility ID has these two inspections, I guess, that have been performed and are being retrieved from SQL Server. Now, once you have a data link, you can actually view this information in a variety of different areas in Essentials. I'll just quickly show how you can view this in a chart. So I'm just gonna add a chart and I'll call this Hydrant Inspections. I'm gonna create a pie chart and I'll just do a single feature chart and click Finish. And I'm just gonna edit this chart, add a single series, and I'll just say, let's create a pie chart on the, I don't know, the inspectors. So let's see if I can find, I don't see inspectors in the list here. Ah, that's because I'm after a data link. Uh, that's, so that's a key thing here. As you can see, there's a data source here. Um, so I can select the field. The, the field is on the hydrant asset itself and I'm after the data link. So here's my inspections data link. If I scroll down here, there's the inspector. Um, so now we're creating a chart based on our data link. And I'll just give it a, color palette, apply my changes, click save site. And now when I refresh my viewer here, this is the uh, viewer that I've uh, created. It's the same viewer as um, if you were to navigate to the viewer section in Essentials Manager. If I select the hydrant here, click view additional details, you'll see here I've got my hydrant inspections chart that I just configured. I can click no chart if I wanted to. Um, or I can select that chart. You can see here that we've got three inspections that are being returned from our SQL server database. I've got two inspectors that were pre performed by County Fire Station and one that's just been done by Station 4. And we can confirm that if I navigate into here. This is the one done by Station 4. This is the, inf and the, the next two have been performed by County Fire and County Fire. And again, I could reduce um, what attributes I actually want to, to display here when performing the data link itself. So yeah, uh, I hope that was informative. Um, that's essentially how you can um, connect to non-spatial databases and pull that information from those non-spatial databases and tie them to a spatial feature using the data linking technology within Geocortex Essentials. Bye for now.